Hello and welcome to episode 2 of this uh, Chile football series with your host speaking, Daniel Campos. I hope you're well. We're going to have a look at a visionary, a pioneer, not just in Chilean football, not just in Latin American football, but world football as well. Fernando José Riera Bausa, not simply Fernando Riera. He was born in Santiago on the 27th of June in 1920, and he uh, passed away in Santiago, his native city, Santiago de Chile, on the 23rd of September in 2010. In fact, I remember the day of his death. It was on the news, on television and radio everywhere. Uh, here in Chile, and um, it uh, marked um, a day of mourning for his immense legacy in the sport. So who exactly was Fernando Riera? Well, for the English-speaking uh, world, many can associate Herbert Chapman, many can associate Matt Busby, yeah, many other managers like Alex Ferguson, Bill Shankly as well, Brian Clough. Now, Fernando Riera was of that same school. He was ahead of his time and no doubt one of the best football managers in the history of the game. We're talking of a former player. He played in the 1950 Brazil FIFA World Cup, played one match in the group stage for Chile and scored a goal versus the United States. Fernando Riera also played in three editions of the oldest international football tournament, the Copa America. So he played in the 1942 edition in Uruguay for Chile, in the 1947 edition in Ecuador, and in the 1949 edition in Brazil, which served as a dress rehearsal of sorts one year prior to the 1950 World Cup in Brazil. So in total, he played 16 matches, in the Copa America, scoring three goals for Chile in a 5-2 win. And then he took his uh, path as a manager and paved the way, um, especially with his education in France. He paved the way for very, very successful results in Portugal, in France, back home in Chile, in Uruguay, at um, Boca Juniors in Argentina, and also in Mexico. So let's go in more detail with Fernando Riera, the manager, former player and manager. Okay, and there's also for a bit of a, a fun fact, Hollywood Hollywood star and Chilean actor Pedro Pascal is uh, also of family lineage to Fernando Riera. So he is um, he is the grandson of Juana Riera, sister. Of Fernando Riera. Fernando Riera began his career at the tender age of 15 at Unión Española, the Spanish community club in the Chilean game, in 1933, so a long time ago. Six years later, he was transferred to Universidad Católica, one of the giants of the Chilean game, where he also captained the side and they won the first division title in 1949. A year later, 1950, after clinching the 1949 Chilean league title, 1950 was a, an important year in the career of Fernando Riera. First of all, because um, in Catalonia and Spain, um, the famous Easter tournament, international tournament, used to be played, while Católica was managed by Alberto Buccicardi. And um, at the time, in Catalonia, it was Espanol and Football Club Barcelona. This was always played in the Easter dates, between the 7th, the 8th, the 9th and the 10th of April. And it was uh, organized by the Football Federation of Catalonia. And Universidad Católica of Chile was invited and Riera impressed on the pitch. He impressed and uh, got snapped up and signed uh, pen to paper with Stade de Reims in France. 
Um, and this was in November of 1950. And also not to forget what I just uh, previously mentioned, in 1950 he represented Chile scoring a goal in his lone appearance in the group stage of the FIFA World Cup held in Brazil. So in 1950 he moved to Stade de Rems, and uh, in 1952, two seasons later, um, he transferred in France to FC Rouen. And uh, at Rouen, he um, he played a a decent uh, you know couple seasons as a as a player. 1953, he moved uh, to Deportivo Vasco in Venezuela. A league that was more in its development stages, mind you. He was already 13, 14 years into his career, so in his latter stages of his playing days. And he, that year, 1953, decided to go back to France for FC Rouen and retired as a player in 1954. So a Chilean player in the 50s, in France, in Europe, and retiring in 1954 in Europe. Uh, that meant a rather different, uh, I guess, uh, breed, different tribe of player. He was described as a player, as a very elegant, uh, possession-based player. Uh, he would play as a right winger. He would play as an offensive midfielder, striker. Uh, very technical and uh, very elegant. Very elegant. That was the better description both by well a number of former players uh, and and managers but we'll get to the management a little later on he retires in uh, in France at FC Rouen 1954 and he begins to study to get his coaching badges it didn't take long and uh, that same year 1954 he signed for Os Belenenses in Portugal as a manager. That was his maiden club for four seasons until 1957. And this was where his legacy began, his imprint. Fernando Riera began to implement practices never seen before in the game. First of all, he saw the need for football players to professionalise and become full-time. He also advocated for a players union, a coaches union, a coaches association and in Portugal he gained his first steps to gaining experience and wealth of knowledge for the legacy and the stellar managerial career that uh, followed. In 1957, he was uh, tempted back to Chile uh, by the Federation under Carlos Dibon and Juan Pinto Duran uh, with a long-term vision, the plan, the Riera plan, uh, which was to reform and revamp the Chilean game, again, to professionalize and install a training headquarters and to also instill um, professional professional practices such as diet, sleeping, eating, because these in, in those days uh, there were no system managers, there were no fitness or physical conditioning, uh, you know, trainers. He did it all. He was a jack of of all trades. And in 1957, he moves back to his home city of Santiago de Chile with this bold five-year plan to set Chile's national team as hosts of the 1962 FIFA World Cup. And he gained uh, plenty of not uh, notoriety because due to indiscipline by the wizard midfield maestro Enrique Cuacua Ormazaban, he omitted the gifted and talented playmaker from the squad to much disagreement and surprise by fellow players and the football media and fans. But uh, Fernando Riera was not going to have any of it. Discipline-oriented and strict manager 
and thought what was best for the, for the team. Of course, it was a historic 1962 Chile side, finishing in third place as hosts, falling to eventual champions Brazil, inspired by Garrincha, with a, uh, a very young Pelé injured, who ended up winning and lifting the 1962 World Cup title over Czechoslovakia. Chile under Riera in the northern city of Arica defeated the Soviet Union led by the Black Spider, none other than goalkeeper Lev Yashin. Just to explain the dimension of uh, Chilean football and its historic third place title, uh, Fernando Riera was instrumental, uh, especially in the psychology and the tactics. He was a pioneer manager, as I keep uh, you know, reinforcing. That year, 1962, FIFA decided that he had everything, he had all the goods for a maiden exhibition match to be played at Wembley in London in 1963. So once the World Cup uh, drew to a conclusion in 1962, Fernando Riera uh, moved back to Portugal, and this time this was his second stint in Portugal this time with Giants and Benfica in Lisbon 1962-1963 and in 63 he guided a select 11 FIFA World Best 11 for its first ever exhibition match in the English capital also another note at Wembley Stadium in the 1963 inaugural FIFA exhibition match, Fernando Riera managed a stellar side, including Eusebio, including Karl-Heinz Schnellinger, including Paco Gento, Raymond Copa, Luis Eizaguirre, his fellow Chilean right back, the legendary Soviet goalkeeper Lev Yashin, Jalma Santos, Alfredo Di Stefano. It was a stellar side against the England national team. From 1963, um, 1962 and 63, at Benfica he took the Portuguese giants uh, to European glory. Remember these uh, in, in those times it was not like the Champions League of today. Back then it was strictly only the champions of each respective league. And uh, Benfica under the Black Panther, none other than El Sebio. Uh, Benfica defeated one of the best sides ever in AC Milan of Italy with Cesare Maldini and Gianni Rivera and company. So it was a, uh, a huge uh, milestone for the Portuguese club. Obviously Benfica also won with Hungarian manager Bela Gutmann. And Gutmann had a very good relationship with, uh, with his colleague Riera. And uh, Riera then obviously gave... Uh, his uh, his time after the uh, European Cup titles with Benfica and moved back to Chile to Universidad Católica in 1963 to 65. Then he crossed the Andes Mountains to Uruguay and managed Giants Nacional in 1966. After 66, he moved yet again to Portugal in the uh, 67 seasons as well. And this was where more um, success ensued because not only did Fernando Riera win the 1962-63 Portuguese League First Division title, they also yet again lifted the Portuguese First Division title in 1966-67. So two Portuguese League titles for the Chilean manager. And... Um, he moves back yet again to Universidad Católica, his beloved Chilean club, for a second stint in 1968, 1969, back to Europe to Catalonia, where he manages Espanyol, 1969, 1970, 1971, he moves to Argentina to manage Boca Juniors, 1971-72. In 72, yet again in Portugal for his fourth stint, this time with Northern Giants, Porto, 1972 and 73, and um, a successful year, 
as well. Brilliant football, and he also prioritised youth talent and youth production, even though at Porto he did not win the title. Then from Porto, he crosses the northern border to the northwest of Spain, to Galicia, where he manages Deportivo La Coruña in 1973. In 1974, he crosses the border yet again to the south of France, to Olympique Marseille. 1974, back to Portugal with fellow giant sporting Lisbon. 1974 and 75. And then from 75, 76, that was the end of his European club managerial career as he decided to move to Monterrey in Mexico in 1975-76. In Mexico, no titles there, but uh, also again a huge coaching legacy, prioritizing technique and, and, and possession-based game and also at a time in Mexican football where the game uh, just grew beyond belief after hosting the 1970 FIFA World Cup. In 78, he moves back home to Chile, to Universidad de Chile, you know, cross-town rivals. Remember, Riera is mostly recognized for his time at Católica, so he manages La U, and they win the Chilean Cup, the Copa Chile in 1979. And um, in 79, um, again, two periods at Monterrey, 75, 76, and 77. And there's a hiatus there. Um, and he returns to Chile at Palestina in 1977 to lift the, the Copa Chile, the Chilean Cup. And then in 79 at Universidad de Chile. So two Portuguese first division titles, league titles, and um, three Chilean Cup titles, 77 with Palestino, 79 at Universidad de Chile, and uh, one more where he moves to the coastal seaside resort city of Viña del Mar to manage Everton, and at Everton he lifts the Chilean Cup in 1984. In 1984 to 85 he takes a year, a year break, in 1986, he moves back to Santiago for his second stint at uh, Universidad de Chile and uh, finally retired from his managerial duties in 1989. So for the record, a third place in the FIFA World Cup in 1962, two league titles in Portugal with Benfica, 1962 and 1966 three cup titles in Chile, it's not just the titles that he's remembered. Now, as a manager, as I said, in Chile, he advocated for a, a coaches association. He advocated for players' rights and coaches' rights and full-time professionalism. He uh, not only was a manager, he was a visionary, he was a tactical genius and... Um, well, I quote here from um, some of the Chilean games greats like Jorge Sullivan, a former player of Unicia Católica, uh, who said that uh, Fernando Riera was a teacher. He taught men, not just football players. He always left uh, something uh, as a teaching. Every Wednesday, for example, he would uh, encourage football players to become coaches and to attend the football coaches school. So he would transmit and transfer his knowledge to football players who had plans of becoming a manager in the near future. He also coached the coaches at football schools. He was a big advocate of football schools and football education and that showed when um, when Universidad Católica won the league title in 1984-1987 under Ignacio Prieto also a former international midfielder for Chile so the legacy that Fernando Riera is, is huge he inspired none other than Manuel Pellegrini the English Premier League champion with Manchester City Arturo Salah the Argentinian Jose Gallego Perez, who won the Chilean League title 
1958 and 1968 with Santiago Wanderers. He also inspired, as I mentioned, Ignacio Prieto, who had a stellar playing career in Uruguay with Nacional and also in, in France. He inspired Ecuador League title champion and Chilean League title champion Fernando Diaz, Fernando Carvalho as well, Jorge Pellicer, Luis Marcoleta and, uh, and also Nelson Cosio. So uh, a big advocate in the Riera school of play, a very elegant style of managing and tactical formation. He was never a fan of a single lone striker. He never played with three defenders at the back. So he always opted for a backline four, given the measurement of the, the width of the pitch. And he always played with two strikers. That was his, his um, mantra. A back four and two strikers up front. So um, either a midfield diamond with three, three holding, two going out wide, and the one attacking creative midfielder. Um, so a 4-3-1-2, or a classic 4-4-2, a 4-2-2-2, four lines. He was uh, visionary, very ahead of his time. Um, like I said, he was the manager who always preferred two strikers up front and a back line four. He also encouraged goalkeepers to play out from the back with their feet. And um, also a manager, like I said, who opted for education through football. His legacy is huge. If you if you happen to be in Santiago and you visit the Nacional or the National Stadium in Ñuñoa, um, there is a statue of him outside Avenida Grecia, uh, a, mar a marble statue um, in commemoration of his immense legacy. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, edition, second edition instalment of uh, Chilean Football News. This was in honor of Fernando Riera, arguably Chilean football's greatest ever manager. Hope you're well. Bye for now.